Two scribes. Could someone have taken it? Oh, he yellow alerted to one or both of the missing loot items. Inside the scribe room, on top of that barrel is a silver candlestick <sighs> worth 50. Brings my total to 20%. It was the wise of me to make certain. I am now... I'm going to wait for the patroller to pass through this room again because I think he's on his way. Yeah, here he comes. Now, despite the game... Hello. Despite the game's attempt to scare you, it's not hard to get the book from the scribe room. As you can see, it's been moved to the podium up in the front. So, I like to come from the east side and just use these desks as hard cover. I can get it right there. The Imbris Analects are worth 100. They bring my total to 22%. They are the mission's second piece of special loot. Now that I have them... I'm going to move behind this guy, although I'm a little bit wary of the patroller. But I think I have time to get across before he returns. On top of this bookcase on the west side is another silver candlestick, worth 50. Brings my total to 23%. And with all that, I'm going to wait for the patroller to pass through again. And then move out of this room behind him. If I suggest something, the only reply Look sharp, is scribe. Maintain your balance. The scribe room is now cleared, and as you can see, there was no reason to worry about that vote of the Keeper Council. As we move out the other side of the scribe room to the west. I actually find it wiser to approach so this hallway it. from below. What would it hurt to use the glyph for a so I'm gonna head back had. down to the Elder Library, sure done trying to Even Elder keep an eye on well the patroller so I can move in behind him. Oh, but I, I should not talk so. Then as we are able to actually descend into the library, we want to mantle onto this bookcase. Some movement. I don't know why he green alerted, but obviously I can't have that. So many distractions lately. Maybe this isn't a good idea after all. Let me try one more thing. May your knowledge increase. Describe well tonight. Maybe if I come at it from the south side, I can stay in this shadow. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get to that window mm -hmm. and get to the western hallway that way. It would be better if the malformed glyphs were saved for study. Did I hear a? Hmm. Huh? Is anyone there? Okay, it's possible. That's all I need to know. Garrett doesn't seem to want to mantle that first little step, so maybe I can still come at the bookcase straight and just come to the very left side. <laughs> that would be ideal, and indeed it seems to work. So It happened again. What happened? Two of the scribes. They had to be given the afternoon off to convalesce. The glyphs, Greetings, you Elder. Mean? What were they scribing? Nothing of great import. 
cephalon and the aphorisms. The aphorisms? Those are hardly even worth practicing penmanship on. There is more at work here than I supposed. Who is the master? The Just as an FYI, we do want to pickpocket both of these elders. I prefer to get the woman first because she walks away from here. The man just patrols back and forth so we can leave him be. We cannot go after the woman until the conversation is over. So we have a very brief window in which to grab her wand. Scribe who writes the glyph or the glyph who seeks a scriber? Do not speak so. I am master over the glyphs I use. Surely. After they turn, just move in on her and get her wand. Use the... Uh, could someone have just taken it? I like to move in here and drop it on the carpet. Don't even need to use the glitch that way. Then I return to this alcove and I'll do a real save because I've reached a pretty good milestone just in my mind of the tasks we need to accomplish while we're here. So this is the entrance to the dining hall. We will go in there momentarily, but I want to pickpocket this elder as well. Gone, but how? I sh should be able to drop this wand without using the glitch just by moving far enough along his patrol. So now we're back in the council room, you'll notice, although we're on the second floor. Just one thing to do in here. And that's creep all the way along the outer wall. Don't panic about the guy down there. I don't think he's ever seen me unless I fall. But we need to get Dang it. We need to get all the way to the base of that statue. Because there's loot there. Oh good. We can just make it up there, make the jump, and the sound won't alert anyone. So at the base of the statue, there's a silver bowl worth 175, which brings my total to 27%. And that's it for now. Let's just creep back. Uh oh. That's what you have to be careful of. You have to make sure you don't fall. Maybe I should quick save in every alcove. So I'm not sure where the patrolling elder is right now. Far enough away, that's good. I'm gonna wall flatten right here. Just wait for him to, where is he? There he is. We need only pick a good shadow in his hallway to wall flatten and get out behind him. Oh, Garrett. He seems to have real trouble getting around the pillars.
It also seems harder when my frames per second cut to 30, which they sometimes do for whatever reason. So if we wall flatten here, we should be safe. He'll patrol right past us. We can get out behind him and head into the dining room. Excellent. Now there is a patroller in the dining room, so let's just save here and so we can time him. Don't want him to hear the door open and close. So as you can see, the tables are littered with goodies. I'm going to start with the western table. Grab the ruby goblet, which is worth 100, brings Should my total to right 29%. And yellow alerts my friend. He'll yellow alert quite a few times. Let's read this note, since we can reach it from the shadow. The Embrus Analects finally arrived by ship, undamaged by the salt spray. Our agents were able to secure it, though the price was quite steep. The captain seemed surprised that the package contained no platinum or diamonds, as he could conceive of no objects of greater value. It has been brought to the scribe room for immediate transcription. Was it impossible to tell? Uh, these are troubling times, but I should not waste my precious time over nothing. So you can wait here for the guard to patrol past you heading toward the fireplace. Hey! Oh my. Who did I hate it when they do that, when they just walk all the way into the wall and don't see you, but literally bump into you and detect you that way. It's just irritating. But it's also easy to fix. We just have to pick a different spot. Oh, but... Should be right there. It slashed my frames per second again. I don't know why it does that. Was it impossible to tell? Ah, these are troubling times. But I should not waste my precious time over nothing. So you may have noticed on that table, next to the note, is another Embrace Analects. That one's worth 100, brings my total to 31%. It's also the third piece of special loot, which completes the objective, find at least three special loot items, three found. So while he's looking at the fireplace, you can grab the ruby goblet and a copper candlestick off that table. They're worth 125. It is they bring my total to 33% and 34% respectively. And he does yellow alert again over the fact that they're missing. Was that something? Let's just see. Now I'm going to take advantage of his alert to grab this portrait. Just make sure you jump and land on the carpet. The portrait's worth 150, brings my total to 37%. Now that troll point is a good time to cross the room. Transcription of received volumes must be current with at least three true copies of all new works and four true copies of Compendia. 
Acquisition of knowledge is an arduous journey. To lose what we have learned takes but a moment. The Brethren and Betrayer seeks to destroy all that we have. Do not let Sloth become his ally. And once you make it across... Actually, I don't quite want to be here yet. I'll let him back up and patrol away from the fireplace again. Okay, no, that is good. You need to climb up the wall to the left of the fireplace in order to reach this ledge. On top of one of these barrels are two broadhead arrows. Oh, that's what I can do. Duh. Then creep over here to reach the top of the stairs. Then I think it's the far bookshelf. Yes, on top of the eastern bookshelf here at the southern end of the second floor of the dining room are two more broadhead arrows. So there's a blank wall up these stairs with a curious device next to it, which we can't do anything with yet. And over at the far end... You can find another elder, another counselor. So let's just pickpocket her. Use the glitch to drop her wand because she's stationary and there's no carpet around. With that handled, the next step is the dormitory. So we just need to get out of the dining hall the way we came in. I'm just going to climb down the wall as soon as his back is turned and get over to the shadows. Try to get clear of him before he patrols because... As I discovered, if we wall flatten along his patrol route, he'll bump into us. So I hear someone outside, so I need to wait until they've patrolled away. Oh, let's let the elder pass by. Did I just see? That was just bad timing. I should be able to get all the way out into a shadow without any trouble. I can move out behind him, same as I did before. Getting to the dormitory is quite easy. I can just head back through the scribe room. Oh, here's where she ends up. How far does she range, I wonder? Why are you not about your work? Oh, I guess she just orbits the scribe room. Okay, maybe I do. Maybe I do want to head through the elder's library again. But with the dining hall clear, that's worth another real save to me. I'll head back up this eastern staircase.
As we move over here toward the dormitory, you see a stationary scribe. He'll never move, he just stares at that statue. But, he, if I remember correctly, he will green alert when the door to the dormitory is opened and shut. A noise? Yes. And that's unavoidable because we absolutely- should not let myself be so easily distracted. We have to come into the dormitory, so... For that reason alone, the mission remains unsupremable. <laughs> Despite me managing to supreme the golden scales with the is no noise now. different position of the guard. So be careful of the rat in this room. If you alarm him, he can in turn alert the elder. But she too is stationary. She'll never move from that spot unless you make noise. So on this table, there's a silver candlestick worth 50, brings my total to 38%, and there's a book to read. Keeper Emery, I spied an initiate reading the Bafford Chronicles in the dining hall this eve. Such travesties of the written word may have their place in a nobleman's store, but are inappropriate here. The monetary value of this book matters not to a scholar. See to it that the book is removed from the hall and destroyed. I'm gonna go ahead and pickpocket her. We can drop her wand on the carpet right away. I'm sure I had my wand, but now it is missing. Unsettling. Once she settles from that, we can unlock this chest. Very simple, left, right, left, and I don't think she hears it open and close. Inside here, there's a moss arrow, a handful of gems worth 200, which brings my total to 42%. And two gold coin, or well, two gold, 75 each. They bring my total to 44% and 45% respectively. Now we need to get into the door over beside her. It's dark enough that we don't get seen, but I think she hears it open and close. I might be wrong about that. It's right, left, up, down. Oh, she doesn't hear it. Good. This looks like Artemis's room. Maybe I can find out where he went. So let's read the note. Journal of Keeper Artemis. There is indeed something amiss with Garrett, but I am not convinced of his guilt. The prophecies do not lie. The clock tower speaks ill of the future. First Keeper Orland asks, acts hastily. The balance is no longer within him, and I fear for the future of our order. I could use my Keeper Ring to open the passages leading to his quarters, but suppose I found nothing to validate the intrusion. I can only hope that my night journeys uncover something before I am discovered acting outside protocol. Keeper Morrow has gifted the order with a set of golden scales. It speaks to what we have become, that such a trinket, precious only for its metal, is so valued. They have been placed on display in the Elder's Library. Perhaps I am mistaken, and they will serve to inspire. At last, I may have learned something of the one who lies dormant. My investigation may take several days, and I must leave without permission. Will I be the next to be accused of treachery? It hardly matters. I do not even bring my robes and my ring with me, for fear that if I die, our secrets may be compromised. So that completes the objective, search Artemis's quarters in the dormitory for a clue to his whereabouts, and it gives me a new note which tells me Artemis's keeper ring can be used to open passages leading to Orland's quarters. So if we move over to his chest, we find three jade, 100 each. They bring my total to 47, 49, and 51% respectively. And floating here in the corner, we find Artemis's keeper ring. Now we can open the way to our good friend Orland. So we can just head up the dormitory stairs. We don't need to head back to the dining hall, although there is another passage there. F 
from the upstairs area of the dormitory, you can spy another counselor alcove, although he's not an elder, he has nothing to pickpocket. So just creep all the way around this room. The passage to Orleans is right there, but we've got a f couple of other things to find in here first. A note. Keeper Cassandra, I am anxious to see what is happening in the city of late. Bring me a copy of your reports as quickly as possible. Artemis will use his Keeper Ring to provide you access to the passages leading to my quarters. First Keeper Orland. Then you can, you can already see the arrows gleaming in the bookshelf over here. Not that I actually need them, but, you know, completionism. There are three broadhead arrows in that little niche in that bookshelf. Now we're ready to go to Orland's quarters. So just approach the wall up here, find this, and hit it. Now you don't need to worry. There is, we can reclose that passage on our way out. First, I want to finish off the council room. Amazingly, we're out of range of those people, so you don't have to worry about them. Which is good, otherwise we'd be in trouble. Just turn right out of Orland's niche, head two alcoves over, and you'll find a chest. Already open. A handful of gems worth 200 brings my total to 55%. Pile of gold coins worth 75 brings the total to 57%. Now, let's get back to Orland's quarters. And keep moving. Now, we'll head through the door, actually get into Orland's quarters. This area is empty, but we still need to Orland. shut the door behind us. I wouldn't have thought you were the peeping Tom sort. He's talking about this thing that Orland can use to spy on people. So in Orland's room, first loot. There's a silver candlestick on his table, worth 50, brings my total to 58%. Inside his chest, there's a silver goblet, worth 50, brings my total to 59%. And two diamonds, 150 each, bring my total to 62% and 65%, respectively. That's it as far as loot in the Keeper compound goes. So, let's read the two notes in here. Journal of First Keeper Orland. I wonder if Katika keeps secrets even to herself. Twice she has sent me a note with instructions, but said nothing in council. But she speaks little beyond prophecy. I am not pleased that the council allows Garrett back into our midst. He cares nothing for balance or the knowledge we guard. Even Artemis will rue this decision. I take no joy in being proven right about Garrett, for it resulted in the death of my most trusted colleague. Had I stood more strongly against him, Katika would not now be dead, and none has the skill to take her place as interpreter. Gamal is far untrained, but she is all we have. I must make arrangements for her promotion. Another note has arrived in the hand I knew as Katika's. If it is her, no, that is madness. If not her, then who have I obeyed for so long? Our halls are not safe. I am binding the keeper door glyphs shut, so all must pass in full view. The enforcers have had no luck destroying Garrett. He has learned more of our secrets than we thought. Tonight I shall see if I still remember the art of the unseen. If Garrett is in the city, I shall find him, and the enforcers will finish this. With the binding seal still in place and kept safely in my room, none may no one may enter through the old quarter passage. Only when Garrett is dead shall I melt the seal with fire, lest our safety be compromised. So that cancels the objective, search Orland's quarters on the top floor for information that might implicate him, gives us a new objective to make the Keeper door glyphs usable again, destroy the binding seal in Orland's quarters, and gives us a new note telling us that the binding seal must be melted with fire. Thankfully, we're out of everyone's detection range in here, so destroying the binding seal is very straightforward.
One fire arrow will do the trick. That completes the objective to make the Keeper Door Glyphs usable again, destroy the Binding Seal in Orland's Quarters. And there's one more note to read. Uh -huh. That seal must be what Orland's using to hide the door glyphs. Time for me to get rid of it. I am sure you have been concerned as well as I over Garrett's motives, and I applaud your caution. I advise that you restrict his access to the upper libraries in particular. Those books are our most prized repositories of knowledge, and we cannot risk them being ill-used. So with all that done, I feel a real save is warranted. Now, I've been worried about this ever since I saw the way the guy down there was turned. Now I need to sneak into the lower libraries and I have to use that glyph that he was guarding. So let's reclose the door to Orland's quarters. Head back out through the dormitory. Shouldn't be any trouble there. Greetings. Greetings to you. Okay, the patroller is right here and he's just now leaving. So the guy out, the stationary guy outside will still green alert over the door. Did I hear a... Hmm. Hmm. Where was I? A noise? I think I'll stay directly behind him until he settles. Just a random noise. That I should be able to make my way back down the stairs to the elders library if you happen to be out of fire arrows which wouldn't really make sense because they give you two at the start of the mission and you'd have no cause to use them but if you happen to be out of fire arrows you can destroy the binding seal in the blue flame if you pluck it off the wall and carry it all the way back to the north tower. So now I have to get to that glyph. Try to keep an eye on him. Which is gonna be trouble, but if I can get back to where the scales were. I think the angle is just so that I should be able to climb down the wall without tripping an alert from him. Whatever else they may say of the new scribes, their penmanship is impeccable. All right. I get the feeling this is going to be trouble, but I don't really see another way to try and do it, so... Let's get over to the right. There's another note. Until further notice, all glyph doors shall be sealed until the brethren and betrayer has been dealt with. We cannot allow unfettered travel through our compound. Acolytes should take care to travel in pairs and remain vigilant. Oh, I'll tell you what. I think that he might be the guard that the council voted to place outside Catechus Chambers. But, still able to get past him on my first try without even a green alert. So, we head to the lower libraries. Okay, it's not a bug. I just thought that when they said a guard outside Catechus Chambers, it would mean in the lower libraries outside her chambers. But no, I think it's the guy in the elders library guarding the door glyph. So, here's what you need to know. At the outset, the lower library is empty. There is no one in here, and it won't populate until you trigger certain objectives. So, 
It should be obvious that the sensible thing to do is clear the place out before we trigger those objectives. So, I'm going to head to the exit room first. This is our eventual passage out. In the bookcase in the southeast, there's a silver statuette worth 50, brings my total to 66%. In the east end of the room, on top of a bigger book, there's another rare book worth 100, brings my total to 68%. If you head over here, on the table, there's a gold plate worth 100, brings my total to 70%. A gold candlestick worth 75, brings the total to 72%. There's nothing up the stairs, Garrett will just say finish your objectives. Hmm. There we go. Something tells me there's no coming back. I should finish everything else I've got to do first. You can pick open this chest. It's a simple left-right-left endeavor. Inside, a pile of gold coins worth 75 brings my total to 74%. Next, on this table out here, there's a copper bowl worth 100 brings my total to 76%. And I'm going to clear the hall of statues. Inside here, on this crate, are three broadhead arrows. And over on in this chest, which is another very simple left-right-left lock, we find a handful of gems worth 75, or a pile of gold coins worth 75, brings my total to 77%, and a handful of gems worth 200 brings my total to 81%. Now we'll go clear Catechus chambers and things will get more interesting. Which way did I come from? Okay. That's what I thought, just had to be sure. So here are Catechus chambers. First, I'm gonna loot the place, cause, you know, priorities. So, on this barrel are two more broadhead arrows. Always fun. On her Whoever table. Did this knows a lot more about glyphs than most keepers. That's not good. So, Katak has been turned to stone. On her table is a gold goblet worth 75, brings my total to 83%. And let's go ahead and read the book that she was reading. Ogilvy's Treatise on Sentience, Section 24. To trace the history of the artifacts is to trace a history of strife and chaos. Where they appear, war follows, or catastrophe. Several factions have ascribed a beneficent purpose, or even a religious origin to the artifacts that fall into their hands, but they delude themselves. An artifact serves no master but itself. To name them artifacts as if they shared one origin or motive is misleading. Several are sentient, but whether they share a common sentience is unknown. They have never gathered in one place. To speculate what might happen is beyond current knowledge, the end of the world or the beginning of something entirely new. Following the movements of these elusive objects is relatively easy, as each subsequent owner falls prey to their influences. An exception to this is the crown, the whereabouts of which is unknown. References to it can be found in pagan mythologies, who believe it was given by the trickster to an offshoot race, though we can find no evidence that this race ever existed. So first, if we turn left, on top of the bookshelf is a purse worth 50, brings my total to 84%. On a shelf behind her bed and behind the statue are two jade goblets, 75 each, bring my total to 86% and 87% respectively. Oh. Well, inside her chest, I just grabbed a diamond tiara worth 200, which brings my total to 91%. The chest is a symbol left-right-left lock. And that, of course, completes my objective. Steal at least 90% of the loot, 91% stolen. 
Also inside this chest is a golden dagger worth 50, brings my total to 92%, and a pile of gold coins worth 75, brings my total to 94%. There's another book to read in here. Compiled Lexicography, Volume 4, Religion. Malcontent, Hammer, a member of the lower class who has publicly spoken against the worship of the Builder. Malefactor, Hammer, one who has actively tried to harm the religion of the Builder. Could theoretically be applied to a Hammerite actively trying to harm the religion of the Woodlord, but not applied to such by the Hammerite Church. Manfool, Pagan, a non-believer, especially an urban resident. Mechanist Religion, a schism of the Hammerite religion. C. Formed by the prophet Charis. The mechanists were characterized by a focus on machinery and technology, and an overwhelming desire to destroy elements of nature. After the destruction of their primary cathedral Soul Forge and the death of Charis, the religion was disbanded. See Hammerite Heresy Trials The for more information. So with that, we'll head into the last remaining room. As always, loot first. On the table is a gold goblet worth 75, brings my total to 95%. There is a silver candlestick worth 50, brings my total to 96%. Under the table, another silver candlestick worth 50, brings my total to 97%. Over near her bed, on the table, another silver candlestick worth 50, brings my total to 98%. And... In the bookshelf next to her bed, a jade ring worth 50 brings the total to a nice, even 100%. And that's everything. Let's read this last note in the mouth of this very oddly placed statue. Garrett, surprised are we to see a note, a paper naming you by your very own name? Are you answering your questions, or are you simply questioning your answers? I know what you seek, and you seek what I know. No one is supposed to know I'm here. So who left me this note? So we've completed the objective. Lastly, visit Katika's murder site in the lower libraries to investigate the cause of her death. And we have a new objective. Go to the Hall of Statues to meet whoever left you the note. So, we should do a real save here because the lower libraries are about to populate with some brand new AIs, which, you know, the AIs themselves don't scare me. They look kind of cheesy, but I will say that, as it usually is for most AIs, the sound that accompanies them is excellent. So, we teleport anyway, so let's just enter the hall right here. This is the place, all right. Why do I smell a rat? Terminus animus. Take the power, the glyphs, the bindings, live, walk, talk, and obey! Yes, my will, my desires. Terminus, Animus, awake! What is your will? Garrett is here among you somewhere. Seek. Fetch. Find him out. Crush him till breathing stops. Cut him till bleeding stops. Do not let him escape. Yes. I must leave you my helpers, my minions, my stone warriors, and secret myself away. Yes, must keep secret. Must stay hidden a little while longer. Oh, so many secrets. So that completes the objective. Go to the Hall of Statues to meet whoever left you the note. Which means all we have to do now is leave. 
but that requires us to get past the statues undetected. And you have to get past the statues undetected. I mean, I think you can destroy them now by bombarding them with fire arrows, but they're essentially impossible to kill. You certainly can't knock them out. So wait for a good opening. Move down the stairs. Dang. I think I need to move farther forward, actually. There we go. No problem. I think it might be smarter to skip the door. Because there is another statue walking around out there. And I think this hallway is still empty. I might be wrong about that. No, it is. Good. So this door affords us the advantage of... ...waiting for the statue to walk to the other end. Whereas this center door is a lot harder to time. This is the last statue we have to get past. It's not that tough, if I remember right. <laughs> Simply didn't know which wall he was going to choose. So if he moves to my left, I should be able to flatten on the wall to the right and creep up the stairs behind him. And that should end the mission. As soon as I get to that door glyph. I should be able to get up these stairs behind him. No problem. And that's it. Pretty simple. Gamal's statues are very easy to sneak past. They probably built them that way since you can't do anything to them. So open the door, get through, get up the ladder, and this will end the mission. I found more than I bargained for. A hideous old woman who makes statues walk, who is out for my blood and knows me by name. Orland doesn't seem to have a clue, so I don't think he's my man after all. Artemis didn't leave me much to go on either. I managed to escape the ambush, but the Keepers still think I'm the enemy. In fact, I only know of one person who might be able to help me. A Hammerite named Inspector Drept. So let's, <clears throat> let's look at the stats. That's a perfect thief in Of Brethren and Betrayers. And if I think about it... The only place that I busted Supreme was getting in and out of the dormitory. The guy green alerted four times when I opened and closed his door. Oh, and there was one other green alert near the very beginning in the North Tower from the Elder spotting me when he walked his little loop before he stopped for good. So, yeah. Very close to Supreme, just didn't quite make it. 
here are our stats. Difficulty expert, time elapsed 45 minutes, loot stolen 48.25 out of 48.25, that's 100%. Times caught 0, opponents blackjack 0, opponents killed 0, stealthy kills 0, non-combatants killed 0, locks picked 6. Pockets picked 6. Bodies discovered 0. Damage taken 0. Healing taken 0. Total for game. Now here's where we see what happened to us in day 6. I predict that there are going to be a ton of bodies discovered and a few times caught as well. But even though you can go watch day 6, you'll see that I was never actually caught and obviously didn't cause any of those bodies. Total for game. Time elapsed 703 minutes. Loot stolen 28,300. And I'm sorry, I just need to write these down. Times caught 2. Okay. That's the proximity trigger that I mentioned can happen. Opponents blackjacked 1. That's the innkeeper in the training mission. Opponents killed zero, stealthy killed zero, non-combatants killed zero, locks picked 96, pockets picked 54, bodies discovered 10, damage taken zero, healing taken zero. So the bodies discovered, obviously, that's just the fights the enforcers started, killing everything that they could lay eyes on, people walked across the bodies. Not my fault. Should be obvious since I haven't blackjacked or killed anyone myself. Now, time's caught. I mentioned this in day six. This number will tick up if you happen to be too close to somebody who alerts to an enforcer. The game will over that, overlap that alert and decide that they detected you, even though they really didn't. You can watch the day six video to see that I was never actually caught and these statistics are misleading. But, so it goes finished all the objectives. I leave this mission with five holy waters, five oil flasks, ten health potions, five explosive mines, twenty flash bombs, five gas bombs, my blackjack, my dagger, twenty-five water arrows, thirty broadhead arrows, five noisemaker arrows, twenty moss arrows, fourteen fire arrows, I used one to destroy the binding glyph, four gas arrows, twenty-seven thousand two hundred twenty-five gold. I've got my door glyph back, and in addition, I still have the mechanical eye, the climbing gloves, the lock picks, the moss arrow and broadhead arrow upgrades. I'm carrying 7625 worth of loot. I have the velvet bag, the climbing gloves, the compendium of reproach, the glyph key, the keeper ring, and all my keys. And I think that's it. Let's hit continue, see what our next objective is. It's going to spawn me in what I guess is Garrett's safe house in the old quarter up above the streets to begin day seven. So we have completed the objective, return to the Keeper Library in Stone Market Plaza, then find the secret tunnel which leads to the Keeper Compound. Our new objective is to find Inspector Drept in Aldale to learn about the hag who set a trap for you in Keeper Compound. Enter Drept's workshop through the window. Our notes are the Pagan Favors, the Hammer Favors, our Blackmailed Landlord, for some reason, the Keeper Door Glyph note is sticking around, even though I can now use the Door Glyphs. I have a note that tells me Drept's Workshop is near the pub in Aldale, and even though I already grabbed it, I still have a note about the map of the Shalebridge Cradle in the Fort Ironwood Catacombs. So that's it. I'm going to save, and I will see you next time for Day 7. Day seven in the city is another big day. It's got another big area to new area to explore. But day seven is the last thing standing between me and the Shale Bridge Cradle. So, like I said, I will see you next time for day seven. That's all for now. Bye-bye.